bring in the recording and then I will go ahead and share my screen. Okay. And we will start our slideshow. Okay. Can everybody see this okay? Good deal. Yes, you see the slides, yeah. Okay, so uh, this uh, this program was originally developed by Kate Hutton, who for a number of years served as RRI training manager. Uh, Kate is section traffic manager for the Los Angeles section. And uh, also, uh, I don't know if she's still reaching six net manager or not, but uh, uh, she's uh, an active traffic operator out uh, on the West Coast. I'm sure some of you in, that are active and have encountered her uh, radiograms and the like. Uh, uh, so uh, we kind of went through this and, and made some changes to it uh, uh, to kind of streamline it a bit. And uh, uh, But uh, most of this is a uh, 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 thank you to Kate, uh, uh, who isn't here, but uh, this is a bit of her handiwork. So uh, essentially, you know, a, a good place to start is why would we want to participate in a CW traffic net? Uh, for the uninitiated, I think CW seems like a very slow and perhaps even inefficient method to communicate. Uh, that's actually not the truth. Uh, some years back, I wrote an article, uh, uh, and it was published in one of the big contesting magazines, uh, or DX uh, magazines, uh, as well as in several other locations, and it was entitled The Case for CW. And I had written it back during those uh, rather uh, unpleasant days when there was a lot of debate going on uh, about the CW testing requirement. And, you know, it had sort of become one of those uh, third rail uh, discussions in the amateur radio community, uh, not unlike some of the more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, unpleasant political debates that we see going on today. And, uh, you know, you bring up CW testing and it would break into two groups and then the two groups would generally break down into name calling and other ad hominems and, and the discussion would go nowhere. And unfortunately, the article, because of that environment, never really uh, got too much play at the time. But uh, several years later, uh, when the, the DX magazine uh, picked it up and a couple of other publications, uh, uh, it, it, it got some, uh, some traction. And uh, if you can track down that article, and I, I suppose I can send a link out to the RRI uh, email list, it's entitled uh, The Case for CW. But what you really find out is that uh, there's two, well, there's a unique characteristic in CW nets uh, that's not present in voice and, uh, and digital nets. And that is uh, because the CW operator naturally sends slower than he can speak or think, the CW operator kind of intuitively seeks efficiency. Uh, he eliminates unnecessary language. Uh, he un uh, eliminates unnecessary content. He tends to simplify uh, in an elegant way the process of managing multiple stations on a circuit. And so whereas the phone operator uh, tends to, you know, uh, because speaking is so natural, that because the phone operator tends to, because of this, the, the phone operator tends to add unnecessary language. He tends to add unnecessary procedures. Uh, this doesn't make phone bad. Phone's a great common, common denominator mode. But, but interestingly, what you start to find is that CW nets actually become more efficient in many cases than voice circuits. Uh, uh, the other thing that's kind of a big advantage for CW nets is because of the relatively low occupied bandwidth uh, in a CW exchange, uh, a CW net can spread stations out to adjacent channels or frequencies to clear traffic simultaneously. So if you have to route traffic maybe between three different pairs of stations, uh, you can move them down two kilohertz or down three kilohertz, down six kilohertz, up six kilohertz, etc. And you can usually do it without any disruption to existing QSOs or, or you know, adjacent channel uh, QSOs and things of that nature. Whereas with voice, that's a little bit more difficult on a crowded band. You know, voice signal takes up what maybe three kilohertz or so. So if you start sending a lot of people off frequencies to clear traffic simultaneously, you begin taking up a significant uh, portion of the subband. 
And so it's very common for voice nets to clear the traffic on that frequency. Uh, whereas with CW nets, the more common practice is uh, what you might call a frequency domain multiplexing, right? The, the net control uh, moves two stations off uh, a few kilohertz to clear traffic and maybe as uh, another two stations are moved up, you know, a few kilohertz to clear traffic. And this is all occurring simultaneously. And, and I guess the other big advantage of CW really is its elegant simplicity. Uh, you don't need any peripherals. There's no need for a computer, laptop, uh, a tablet. Uh, your skills are what you rely on. And, uh, and you don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need a lot of power. Uh, it's, it's very, very simple and elegant. You can take a little QRP transceiver into the field or a little 20 watt um, uh, CW transceiver. And all you need is a wire and a tree, you know, a battery, a transceiver, and uh, some message forms, and you can communicate. So it, it's an elegant and, uh, you know, kind of beautiful way, really, to uh, to exchange uh, message traffic. Is it the be on, uh, be all and end all of, say, public service communications or MCOM? Of course not. It, it, it's it, it's a, a valuable tool in the tool belt. And I'm not going to go so far as to argue that you should use it instead of WinLink or, you know, the digital traffic network or, or your uh, voice net. Uh, but it is an excellent tool to have as, uh, as uh, an additional method for moving uh, communications traffic. Uh, obviously, to get the real benefits out of CW nets, you need to have some efficiency. You need to have some experience. It's skill based as opposed to just being technology based. And as a result, it requires an investment of a certain amount of effort and time. But in doing so, what I think most CW operators discover is that it's an art form. And like uh, all art forms, it adds sort of a, uh, there, there's an element that uh, offers lasting satisfaction. You'll see guys that have been handling, uh, participating in CW traffic nets for 20, 30, 40, 50 years or more uh, because they enjoy practicing the art form. It's not simply using a tool. It's not, not like operating a microwave oven as sometimes a digital mode seem to be. Uh, so it, it's sort of an interesting and fascinating art form uh, as well. So uh, CW nets really do have a lot of value. Obviously to participate on a typical say NTS or RRI traffic net, uh, one needs to have some level of proficiency. And, and most nets, with the exception of some slow speed training nets, they, they tend to operate above 15 words a minute. And it really depends on, you know, where you live, what state you live in, you know, uh, the local traffic handling culture. But, you know, if you're below 15 words a minute, the best thing to do really is uh, develop your, your uh, CW skills maybe get together with uh, an experienced CW op or traffic operator and maybe practice sending some radiograms back and forth uh, so you develop the necessary proficiency and comfort. As your proficiency kind of gets into that, say, you know, 18 to 20 word per minute range, uh, and you can kind of uh, treat CW as a bit of a natural language, uh, CW nets really start to become a useful tool. And, and most uh, section nets maybe operate in that 20 word per minute, you know, range. Uh, some uh, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, so, you know, if you have that proficiency, maybe between 15 and 18 words a minute, uh, that's kind of a good place to get involved in, uh, say, section or state CW traffic nets. You're, you're right there in the speed range. You might have to reach a little bit occasionally. But one of the other nice things about CW traffic nets is because the the procedures are so standardized and there's sufficient repetition in things like the net call and the process of stations checking in and checking out, it really works to improve your CW proficiency very rapidly. If you're getting up into these things like uh, wise into the region net, uh, you know, you're, you're probably going to start getting into, you know, the uh, toward the mid 20 word per minute range, you know, 22 uh, to 25 words a minute sometimes. Uh, uh, so if you can do a solid 20, you know, 22 words a minute, you can even go above the section and, and start doing things like liaison to the region net. And if you get to be a, you know, a competent and what I call a qualified uh, CW operator, 
you can move up to the Aryan net. And Aryan nets are a beautiful thing to listen to. It's like a well choreographed uh, ballet uh, or an opera. Uh, it's uh, it's fascinating to to monitor an area net and to see the efficiency and beauty of how they operate. Uh, the highest level in the traffic system, as many of you probably know, are the uh, inter-area traffic net assignments, uh, formerly called TCC. These are the circuits that you know carry traffic between the area nets, and these are usually your top-notch CW operators. They they operate uh, you know good quality stations, often with good antenna systems and amplifiers, and and uh, they can. Uh, you know, they're kind of an arcade kind of guy, Roger over, Roger over, you know, they, they can copy everything that's thrown at them. But I really do want to stress that uh, I don't think there's a CW traffic net in this country or in the world that doesn't welcome new participation. And the one thing you should never be afraid of is making mistakes or being the new guy who's learning how to do this. It's, it's not something that should deter you. Uh, the first time a lot of guys check into CW nets, they make all kinds of errors and blunders. It goes with the territory. Nobody's going to pass judgment on you. Uh, it's it's worth it's worth putting yourself out there. Some benefits if you're going to be involved in um, you know CW nets would be some ability to treat traffic nets as kind of a natural language. So, you know, for example, you know, when you hear the, when you hear the net control, uh, for example, give the net call, something uh, like this and see if I. So for example, QMN, which is the Michigan net uh, stations check in or QNIK, that's the net call. And you know you don't have to necessarily write that down. You just hear it in your head, right? You know you hear you hear the familiar net call uh, regularly. So you know if it's uh, Illinois net, you know the invitation to check in. So if you have some ability to, uh, you know, kind of uh, copy some CW in your head, uh, that that's a good good place to be. And of course, uh, you have to be able to write some things down, right? So if you're receiving a radiogram, you know you have to be able to to print it out, or neatly handwrite it, or uh, you know type on a computer or a mill if you're you're really serious about it. And likewise, if you're sending a radiogram, you know you need to have a good fist. Uh, you need to you need to have that ability to to uh, send good, solid, readable code. Now, there was a famous press telegrapher and one of the founders of Associated uh, or United Press. His name was Walter P. Phillips and um, most mostly remembered for the Phillips Code. But he once wrote that uh, it may seem paradoxical, but it's not the speed one makes on a circuit, but rather the speed. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not the speed one makes on the circuit, but the speed one loses. That's important. In other words, what he was saying was that uh, it's better to send slow and carefully once than to repeat the radiogram or the message twice at a higher rate of speed <laughs> or deal with the fills or, you know, the requests for clarification. So, uh, you know, a good fist is helpful, but that doesn't necessarily mean a fast fist, right? It means just being able to send good readable code. So, you know, a, a bit of natural uh, understanding of CW where you can kind of Follow some of the basic instructions in your head is helpful. Uh, a good fist means just, you know, you can send good readable code, even if that's at 12 words a minute. Uh, and a halfway decent, you know, antenna and transceiver. Uh, uh, the interesting thing about traffic nets is that it's a much more challenging operating activity than even DXing. And some people may turn their nose up at that, but here's the deal. A traffic net meets 365 days a year, regardless of propagation conditions. Region and area nets exchange traffic 365 days a year, regardless of propagation conditions. So many hams think, well, you know, I, I get out well, you know, I can, 
I can talk to different states, you know, but really what you're doing is you're communicating with states and locations that propagation often favors, whereas in traffic handling, you are communicating uh, over a specific range with the uh, same stations uh, on a schedule at a scheduled time, regardless of population or uh, propagation conditions. So in many respects, it's a bigger challenge to reliably participate in traffic nets than it is, say, uh, to randomly chase DX or, you know, randomly, you know, communicate with uh, stations for casual QSOs every day. And then, of course, you need some knowledge of the radiogram uh, format, uh, you know, nets, how they operate, some of the basic procedures. And we'll touch on some of this tonight. And uh, uh, as a general rule, if you haven't taken uh, RRI training class TR002, which is entitled An Introduction to the Traffic System, strongly recommend you take that class because it covers the radiogram, it, recovers how, uh, it covers how nets work, and uh, things of this nature. So again, you don't need really much but a decent uh, transceiver, uh, halfway decent dipole antenna or equivalent, something of that nature. Uh, you don't need uh, any fancy equipment and you just basically need uh, a halfway decent fist, a uh, comfortable speed for you, and uh, a bit of proficiency in uh, copying code. That's it. There's not much else to it. Uh, it's just the uh, willingness to put in the time. For those of you that are new to CW, uh, of course, we have some organizations that help you develop your CW skills. Uh, the Long Island CW Club is well worth joining if you're not a member. Uh, they got excellent programs with daily courses on and get togethers on tutoring on everything from uh, how to use uh, different types of keys to where they check your fist. They, they help you with um, issues in terms of uh, copying, uh, uh, your, uh, copying the code, problems you might be encountering and so forth. Uh, the CW Academy also has uh, a training course with mentorship and so forth. Uh, I like the Long Island CW Club a little bit better because I think it, uh, it pushes the CW operator to a bit more diverse uh, type of operating, whereas the CW Academy seems to uh, push people more toward a contest style. And I, I like the diversity that the, the Long Island group offers, but they're both good programs and, and both are uh, recommended. Uh, and of course, there's all kinds of resources out there, right? You know, online resources and so forth for brushing up on your code. Uh, if you are brand new to CW traffic nets, uh, uh, just a word of warning, uh, automatic decoders like computer programs, uh, FL Digi, things of this nature, do not respond well uh, for traffic handling. Uh, it, there's um, uh, static, um, you know, uh, adjacent channel or co-channel interference, uh, uh, selective fading, things of this nature, uh, tend to make them kind of, uh, well, let's put it this way, far less efficient than the, the ear of a good uh, CW operator. Uh, yeah, don't rely on, on those crutches. You know, use your own head, use your own ears, and uh, you know, step out there and just enjoy the process of learning. Uh, and uh, so, you know, just keep that in mind that this is really a, a human skill based kind of thing. Uh, I'm not going to dig in too deeply into the structure of the traffic system. We cover that in other classes. Uh, but suffice to say that uh, for most uh, new CW traffic handlers, you're going to start at the section or state level. Uh, right. So uh, almost every state in the country has a CW traffic net. Uh, above these nets are what we call region, area, and IATN circuits and so forth. And these are really meant for assigned liaison stations, not general check-ins. So if you're new to CW traffic nets, I would recommend you locate a CW traffic net in your area. And you can listen to it for a few days, kind of learn how it works. And uh, there is a curated net directory on the RRI webpage. Uh, it's much more up to date than the ARRL one. Uh, the, we have a, a gentleman from New York City uh, Amateur Radio Emergency Communication Services who regularly reaches out to 
uh, the nets and he goes ahead and uh, updates uh, uh, our net directory probably uh, a minimum of twice a year, uh, sometimes more often. And uh, so uh, I would encourage you to use the, the net directory that's available on the RRI webpage to uh, locate a, a net that's that's near you. And uh, I, I think all of the, the more common ARRL and RRI nets are listed uh, in that directory. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, the, the section nets here at the, the, say, the bottom of the inverted traffic pyramid are where you're going to, where you're going to want to participate. Uh, so, uh, and then, of course, as you get uh, kind of gain in proficiency, you might move up to region nets or area nets or something like that. But we won't cover that too deep uh, in this course. Uh, nor, would, uh, nor are we going to go deep into the radiogram other than to... Uh, to give you a couple of examples here in the training class. So uh, let's let's give a quick apologia here for the radiogram. Uh, the radiogram is really nothing but an email uh, transmitted by CW voice or some other mode. Now, it's, it's a telegram. Uh, and uh, along with the telegram, there are, there are certain network management data. Uh, and of course, we make a, a, a pretty good uh, explanation uh, for this in our um, uh, intro to the traffic system class. But uh, this information here at the very top uh, is all what you might call uh, network management data. It provides information to the operators relaying or delivering the radiogram uh, that's important to the process. It tells the or provides the location here of the person who signs the message. Okay, so the place of origin is associated with the person who signs the message. It gives the call sign of the station who first injected or originated the radiogram into the network. Uh, it has optional handling instructions. Uh, and of course, the originator can assign a message serial number to each message that he originates. Uh, it offers a precedence that indicates the importance of the message to the person who are, whose name appears in the signature. So R is for routine, P is for priority, uh, W is for welfare, and so on. Uh, so there's four precedences. There's routine, welfare, priority, and emergency uh, communications traffic. Uh, so this tells the network and the delivering operator uh, the importance of the radiogram. Uh, there's a group count or check that indicates the number of words in the uh, text of the message. So the receiving operator or relaying operator counts the number of words. And uh, if the number that he counts upon receiving the message doesn't match the number up here, okay? Uh, he knows he missed something or there's some form of confusion and he can ask for fills or seek clarification from the transmitting operator. And then of course there's a date and time. Time is optional on radiograms, uh, but uh, you know, the date's mandatory and that basically uh, uh, just tells the, uh, the uh, addressee when the message was originated or, or tendered for origination by the person who signs it. So this all has value. And actually, if you, I don't know how many of you were using the internet maybe 30 years ago or, you know, 35 years ago, but you may remember that emails used to have a whole bunch of network management data at the top. <laughs> it's kind of hidden from view these days, but it's still there. Uh, even in the uh, internet uh, age, Every email has this kind of in, information uh, in, in a, a different format, of course, attached to it. Uh, so here you can see the network management data at the top, uh, the address of the person to whom the radiogram is addressed. And here you can see a text. This, in this case, it's a service message uh, reporting the time and date of delivery of a radiogram to the originator and the signature of the person who tendered the message for origination. In many cases, these are the same people. Uh, 
you know, the, the self originates, so to speak. Uh, so that's all a radiogram is. It's a simple telegram or email transmitted via the traffic system. Now, one of the things that I think scares people a lot from uh, traffic handling are the pro signs uh, or procedural signs. And in reality, there's only a few that you need to know. Uh, so uh, these are the common ones. Uh, the AA. Uh, so it's transmitted like this. Okay, AA. Now, actually, that's the American Morse code comma that was used by commercial telegraph operators. So if you go back to this prior message, the AA is transmitted after each line of the address. You know, it's a comma, just like in the one room schoolhouse when you were taught to address an envelope. You would put a comma after the name and a comma after the street address. So in this case, uh, it would be K, K6HTN, da 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 da, or AA, Pasadena, California, 91104, and then the break. Okay, the da 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 separates the address from the text and the text from the signature. Okay, so basically it bookends the text of the message. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, I'll start with Kate. Okay, so did you hear the AA and the break uh, pro sign in there? Da 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 and da 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 da. Everybody got that? Okay, good, good. I saw an okay in there somewhere. Uh, so, uh, and then of course at the end of the message is the pro sign AR. Okay. Okay, hear that? Uh, and so AR is really FN in the original American Morse code for finished, okay? In American Morse code, F is dotted, and N is dotted. Put them together, and you get dotted, dotted, okay, for finished. So really what AR means is I'm finished with that radiogram, okay? Now, after that, um, operators will typically send N for no more, or they will send B, da 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 or a numeral uh, indicating the number of additional messages that they're going to transmit to you. So they might send for no more messages. That's da 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 Or they may send, or if they have two more messages, Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Very simple stuff, really, you know. What, is the B, what does the B indicate? Just more, but no number? That's right, yeah, it's, it's kind of a generic uh, more to follow. And right. I, I don't know the history where the B came from, to be honest with you. Uh, it's just one of those conventions that arose over the years. Okay. Uh, so typically, you know, that's when you hear a retool Let's say uh, we have two really proficient professional grade CW traffic handlers clearing messages on a area net. It's very common when uh, you come to the da 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 The receiving operator will just do this. He'll tap his key and that's his Roger. He doesn't waste any time. And then the transmitting operator goes into the next radiogram. Okay. Uh, so it, it's just a way of saying, okay, more to follow. So right. it's not a line. You could say, um, you could say R and then K, or you, could, you do... could say QSL, right? Yep. You can do that too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's say somebody's just sending you one message. 
right? Uh, like this service message here in the example. Uh, and uh, the transmitting operator says, then you can go, and that's, that's all you have to do, just QSL uh, or Roger or whatever you wanna do. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule as, uh, as to how you acknowledge receipt of the message, you know, but QSL or R for Roger are both fully, you know, perfectly acceptable practices. Okay. So, uh, you know, don't let uh, uh, pro signs freak you out. We've basically just now covered all the pro signs uh, that you have to really worry about in transmitting or receiving a radiogram. I will add that there's one other pro sign that you will commonly encounter on traffic nets, and that's the pro sign for standby. <laughs> da 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 da. And a lot of times when stations are checking into a net, uh, the net control will say, you know, uh, uh, you know, well, let, let's say you've, you've, you've checked in and the net control will acknowledge you by saying, you know, da 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 or Roger, WB7S, uh, da 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 da, you know, in other words, stand by. Uh, and that's it. That's all the pro signs you really need to know to get started on CW traffic nets. There, there's no great long list that you have to, <laughs> that you have to memorize. It's really straightforward and simple. The da 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 da, you know, the da 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 da, you know, the, the AA, the, the break uh, pro sign, uh, the AR or finish uh, pro sign, and then of course the standby pro sign. And you're pretty much uh, done with pro signs. It's, it's really straightforward and simple. Uh, so, you know, just keep these things in mind and uh, you're good with the pro signs. It, it's really elegant and simple and, and easy to remember, okay? And you'll hear the usual abbreviations that you hear regular QSOs too, like GE for good evening or GM for good morning and TU for thank you and things like that, you know? Very, very simple stuff. You'll also hear Q signals and QN signals. And uh, uh, um, the Q signals that you hear mostly will be the same ones you hear in regular casual QSOs. You're gonna hear QSL, uh, but you're gonna hear a few additional ones, uh, uh, you know, the, the, that are unique to traffic handling. QRU means no traffic, basically. Uh, QTC means I have traffic for. Uh, you may hear the occasional station, uh, experience station, give you a signal report using QRK, uh, which is basically your readability is. So like if I'm receiving a message from you, uh, I might I might wanna give you a signal report so you know whether to maybe slow down your transmitting speed or kind of leave a larger space between words or groups. So I might say something like, you know, <laughs> So QRK3 means you're kind of fair readable and QRB means I'm ready to copy. So there, there's a few of these that you really uh, will want to know. Uh, there's also QN signals. These were developed in the 1930s by the Michigan QMN net and they became standard for the ARRL and really all CW traffic nets. And uh, so, and, and these are very intuitive. So if you hear, for example, QNI, uh, that means check in, so I for in, uh, QNX, X for excused, uh, QNO, I'm out of here, you know, I'm leaving the net, uh, you know, think QNT, time out, okay, I'm leaving the net for five minutes, so if you say QNT 10, uh, uh, I'll be out of the net for 10 minutes, okay, time out. Uh, the last letter in the QN signal really is representative of its meaning. So they're incredibly simple and intuitive for the most part. QNY means QSY. It means move to, you know, down three kilohertz or down six kilohertz. So if the net control says QNY three, down D3, QNY D3, uh, you know, that means 
you know, move down three kilohertz, okay? Uh, so they're very, very intuitive. And here's some more examples of the more common ones, right? Uh, QRU, you know, uh, uh, what do you have for me? You know, I have no traffic. Uh, QNI, uh, uh, you know, check in now. So if I send the net call in QNI, that means basically check in now. So. And then that, that's my invitation to check in, okay? QTC means I have traffic for, and typically you list, you say QTC followed by the destination and quantity. So if I'm, uh, say for example, on the Illinois net, I might say, I just said, you know, QTC, uh, Chicago 1, you know. Uh, sometimes you'll hear a net control say QNA at the very beginning of the net. That means answer in prearranged order. So he might say something like QNA 8RN. That's his invitation specifically to the eighth region net to check in. So uh, these are very, very intuitive, but really to be as a beginner, the only thing you really need to know is QRU, uh, QNI, QNX. Okay, it's really that simple. Uh, when you become a little more proficient and you've kind of listened to the net for a couple of weeks, you'll pick up on all these other pro signs. But you just begin checking in and being checked out or excused. Uh, it's basically, you know, QNI, okay, QRU, and QNX. That simple. Does that make sense? It's very simple and straightforward. You don't need to know a lot to get started. So this is a way kind of, of explaining that CW nets are very structured and very predictable. Um, and that works very well for CW nets. It eliminates confusion. It eliminates unnecessary language. Um, it's a very efficient way of doing things. Uh, the abbreviations and pro signs are very simple and intuitive. And so uh, what we're going to do here is take Kate's presentation and we're going to go ahead and and kind of give some examples of very basic net procedures. But before we do that, I want to point out that we have this operating aid available. It's uh, it's published by Radio Relay International, and it's a we call it the pink card. It's really an eight and a half by eleven pink card, and this is a great tool to have for the beginning CW traffic operator or really any traffic operator because it also has information for the digital traffic net and voice nets. But over here, you can see you have the standard Q signals here in the green box. And then we have the QN signals over here so that you can look them up. OK, and so uh, this is a really useful tool if you encounter a Q signal that you really don't uh, understand. And if you want one of these pink cards, drop me an email after the uh, course and I will stick one in the mail to you, and you will have one available uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, when you get started on the nets. Uh, and it provides a whole bunch of information. Here's a sample radiogram format uh, and, and information on digital traffic net commands, things of that nature. So as you become more involved in traffic handling, this traffic operations aid can help you. On the other side here, we have the handling instructions and their meaning. Uh, we have a typical, you know, uh, radiogram. Uh, we have the, uh, you know, the preamble contents and their explanation. We have the ITU uh, phonetic alphabet up here, uh, and a whole bunch of information all in one handy, uh, you know, pink uh, uh, heavy uh, card uh, that you can use as a reference um, uh, item uh, in your shack. 
Uh, so again, a very useful tool to have uh, when you're first getting uh, started in traffic handling, or even if you've been doing it for a good number of years. So obviously, uh, let's talk a little bit about how the net operates. And I think for tonight's course, we're just gonna cover some real basics. We're not gonna get into things like region or area nets or things of that nature. And obviously the first duty of the net control is to establish that the frequency is unoccupied because nets don't own frequencies, right? A lot of times if you have a scheduled net on a particular frequency, you can politely ask an existing QSO to move away. And a lot of times guys will do it or you slide the net down a kilohertz or two, you know, or more to, to, to make room and you call the net. So the first duty is to basically ask if the frequency's in use. And I think it's safe to assume everybody here knows how to do that. Once you do that, uh, you call the net, right? And every net does this a little different, but it might be something like, uh, in this case, Southern California net. Okay, that announces that the net is beginning. And then most nets have a preamble. Uh, let's let's go to the next one here. I'll do these myself with the, the old straight key and oscillator here. Uh, and then of course, most nets have a, a, a speech, right? So it might be, you know, uh, you know, welcome to the Southern California net, uh, uh, now open uh, in some nets will ask for slow stations first before they move on to the faster guys. It depends really on, on the net that you're checking into. So in this particular case, the that operator might say something like, uh, I'll do the Michigan net instead. So I said, uh, Michigan uh, section CW net, uh, please zero beat QNZ, uh, uh, QNN, as the net control is WB8SIW, and QNA, 8RN, which means answer in prearranged order, eighth region rep. Okay, so that's kind of like the preamble to start the net. And I invited the eighth region rep, that is the liaison to the next higher level net to check in first. And uh, that's really all there is to it. Now, of course, that won't affect the newcomer. But then, of course, once the key stations or these liaison stations are checked in, then the net control will typically open the net to general check-ins. And that's where your turn comes in. And it can often be something as simple as... So S-C-N-Q-N-I-K. Okay. In other words, Southern California net, QNI, over. Then all you have to do to check in is send a letter of your choice, something like the first letter of your call sign, a suffix. So like uh, if I'm Jerry over there in Wyoming, okay, I send an S. Uh, if net control repeats S, okay, that's my invitation to check in, okay? So if you hear S come back to you, then you simply go, Okay, and so now you've checked in and uh, said no traffic. Uh, so DE, WB7S, QRU, and that control will typically come back and say, Roger. Uh, so, you know, uh, Roger, WB7S, QRU, Da -da 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 -da, the pro sign for standby. Okay. Now, as a newbie, you're probably not going to receive any traffic the, the first, um, you know, quite a few times that you check into the net. So, the only other 
real procedure that you know need to know to just simply check in and check out of the net is you just simply listen to the net proceedings, kind of follow along, see what's happening. And eventually the net control is gonna start excusing stations. And so he's gonna come back to you and say something like, uh, send your call sign or your call sign suffix. And so the net control sends, uh, uh, let's say you're uh, Rob W2ITT, he might go, okay, he sends ITT, and then you just tap your key, let him know you heard him, and then he'll say, okay, so uh, thank you, Rob, 73, QNX, or you're excused from the net, then Rob just says, you know, and you're done. So, you know, if you've never checked into a traffic net, that's all there is to checking in and checking out. Very simple, very straightforward. I hope I'm not sending too fast. I, I took the straight key out here to slow myself down. Uh, and uh, just kind of realized I'm probably still sending it about 18, 20 words a minute. I uh, need to remember to slow myself down here a little bit. Uh, but uh, does that make sense so far to everybody? Uh, anybody uh, have a question? Uh, feel free to speak up. Hey, MAL here. Uh, if you go back to Kate's uh, service 424. Uh, yeah, you touched on the precedence uh, RW and uh, P uh, specifically emergency spelled out in CW versus E in CW. That's correct. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Oops, let me. Uh, yeah, so let's go back to this pink card here. That's probably the best thing to go to. Sorry, guys. Trying to. Uh, well, let's see. Let's do escape. And this is a lot easier. Yeah, so if you look here, uh, there should be, let me minimize this. Here's the radiogram precedences. So obviously, uh, routine is everyday radiograms here. Uh, welfare is the uh, any message related to the health or well-being of an individual, typically in a disaster area. Uh, priority is a time-sensitive message. This would typically be something like a served agency message. And emergency would be any message that has life and death consequences. So uh, something along the lines of, uh, you know, the, the dam is overtopping and it's predicted to fail within the next two hours or, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know a aeromedical evacuation required at such and such a location. Uh, th that would be an emergency message, right? So uh, emergency is always spelled out. Um, priority is designated P. Uh, welfare is designated W and routine is designated R. And again, we do cover this in the in detail in the uh, TR uh, hyphen 002 training class entitled Introduction to the Traffic System. And we go through, you know, kind of all of these, these little nuances of the of the radiogram format. Uh, is that good, uh, uh, adequate uh, to, to your liking there, uh, Mike, over? Oh, absolutely. I just wanted to touch on the, the consequence of E versus emergency simply because uh, a quick bump of the key incidental, uh, you're sending an E and you don't even realize it. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's definitely a good point. Uh, so uh, uh, do we have, uh, let me uh, reopen my, my little uh, viewer here. Uh, thumbnail videos. Anybody else have comments, questions, uh, things of that nature? Concerns? Can you guys hear the code oscillator okay? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I got this absolutely antique uh, Amico code oscillator here uh, on the desk. I want to make sure it sounds okay. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, so yeah, again, you know, the main thing is that you want to listen for the net call, you know, so it'd be something like, uh, you know,
So ILN or Illinois Net, uh, QNIK, that's your invitation to check in. Uh, after the net control sends that, you simply send a letter of your choice. Okay. If the net control repeats your letter, that's your invitation to check in. So he repeats your letter, and then you can simply check in without traffic. That's simple. You've checked into the net, and then he'll simply acknowledge you, you know. That's simple. Make sense? Okay, good. And again, you know, same thing here for being excused, right? So, you know, we we go ahead and uh, uh, move down here. I'm going to kind of work my way through this program a little bit and uh, find uh, uh, where somebody's excused. Here we go. Uh, so, uh, for example, if uh, K6MQA is being excused, Okay, it's very simple and straightforward. You know, uh, net control sends MQA. You simply tap your key. Recognize, you know, okay, I heard you. And then he says, Okay, and then you simply respond with whatever you want, you know, a quick pleasantry. And that's it. Now, and again, you have a little flexibility on how you how you want to do that, you know, with the classic or something of that nature, if you like. Uh, very simple and, and, and straightforward process, checking in or checking out uh, the traffic net. Uh, so that's that's the basics of getting in and out. Uh, the, and I take it this makes sense uh, so far to everybody. Uh, so let's see if we have any. Uh, uh, I believe the yes, if you uh, the pink card is actually available uh, in the RRI training manual. If you go to the publication section of the uh, radiorelay.org, it's radiorelay, all one word, dot org, and go to publications, you will see the RRI training manual, and the pink card is available at the back, uh, uh, one of the pages of the, of the RRI training manual, okay? And uh, I'd recommend you guys, you know, if you're new to traffic handling, you might want to download a PDF copy of that from the web page, uh, from the RRI webpage. So let's, uh, just for the sake of completeness, let's talk about checking in with traffic, okay? Uh, process is almost identical. So uh, let's see if somebody here uh, will go to. And Jim, I think uh, Whiskey Papa for uh, Quebec Zulu Hotel has his hands up. He has a question. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and speak up. I couldn't see, I apologize. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, what happens when you have uh, two stations that use the same uh, response to the uh, net? So you, <laughs> how you do what, what you do that? Well, you, you figure it out. I mean, that, that's the okay. that, that that's the answer, really. Uh, generally okay. speaking, most CW traffic operators operate break in. Okay. Uh, so, you know, if you're familiar with break-in, that's where you can, or QSK, that's where you can hear between the, the letters and so forth uh, while you're transmitting. And one of the guys will hear the other guy checking in simultaneously and just uh, out of courtesy, one of them will usually stop and then, you know, he'll try again next time around. Uh, if you're a regular on a traffic net, uh, you'll kind of figure out pretty quick, like if there's three guys that have, you know, uh, suffixes that begin in M, you'll typically pick something different to use. Uh, uh, I'll sometimes use American Morris letters like uh, K or, you know, R or C in American Morris because they're unique <laughs> and the net control is usually a good enough operator. You'll pick up on it right away and, and do the same 
do the same thing. But generally speaking, the first letter of your call sign suffix is fine. And if you double with somebody, uh, it, it's usually not a problem because it's un, an uncommon occurrence. Uh, I hope that's an adequate answer. Uh, for sure, thank you. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about checking in with traffic. Again, it's very simple. The, the whole process is identical, except that when you check in, you say QTC, uh, your destination and quantity. Okay, uh, so for example, it might be, uh, you know, uh, QTC uh, Havens, let's say it's the Nebraska net. So you, you, know, you have one message for Havens, Nebraska. So it might be something like, uh, you know, So I checked in, you know, DE, WB8SIW, QTC, Havens, one, okay? And then net control will come back and go. Roger, WB8SIW, standby. It's that simple to list the traffic. Uh, no great magic involved uh, in that either, okay? And so, uh, you know, uh, pretty straightforward kind of stuff. Uh, now, there's two ways that you might be uh, directed to exchange traffic, uh, one of which is on frequency or one of which is off frequency. Uh, so if uh, net control wants you to exchange the uh, exchange traffic on the frequency, uh, what he'll probably do is... Going back to our little pink card here. Hey, uh, James. Yeah. Before you get into the exchanging of traffic, uh, this came yeah. up for me recently. Uh, somebody checked in and listed some traffic, and then I checked in after them, and I wanted to take that traffic. Mm -hmm. so after I check in QRU, what would I say to tell the net control that I'd like to take that piece of traffic for, say, Patterson? Okay. So it's it's very easy. Uh you would use the Q signal QSP. Oh, okay. that's when. Okay, I thought QSP meant, are you ready to take to transmit? Like you're, we're ready to transmit it. I didn't know that I could use it to say I'm willing to take it. Right. Yeah, it's kind of the convention. Uh, so let's say you have one for Patterson's been listed. As you check in, you might say something like. QSP, the destination, and then K. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You don't have to say the quantity or anything, just the destination and, and K. I, I, I just coded in, I can take Patterson. I didn't know I could say QSP. So <laughs> yeah, you understood yeah. what I meant, but hey, there hey, was you, a Q code for it. Yeah, yeah. You got the message across, though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, we got so, the message across. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, QSP is kind of a common practice. Okay, thanks. Yeah. ML, it's a comment. Yes, yeah, yeah, Mike, go ahead. That, if nobody had agreed to take it or said they would take it, how does the net operator ask for someone to take it? Do they say QSP Patterson question mark? Yep. Yeah, they go say, for example, SIW, and I tap my key, and he goes uh, QSP Patterson question mark K, you know, yeah. da da da. And then I say either dot it for no or, uh, you know, C for uh, yeah. yeah, da 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 it for yes or something like that. Okay, thanks. For yes, yeah. Okay, MAL was a comment. Uh, I was for a short time a slow net manager uh, geared towards uh, newbies into the CW traffic handling. And if you're not sure about a Q signal, longhand is perfectly acceptable. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, remember, uh, 
this isn't a military or, or professional radio. This is amateur radio. <laughs> and it's called amateur radio for a reason. It's a place to learn and grow. And uh, you don't have the uh, master chief or senior chief uh, looking over your shoulder on board ship uh, saying, hey, you know, um, I don't like the way you operate. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't get excommunicated. So I guess it worked. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that's the one big deterrent a lot of people have. They're afraid of making a mistake. But, you know, it's like any skill, whether you're learning to ride a horse or, you know, whether you're learning to, uh, you know, to uh, shoot a, a pistol or whatever, you know, kind of hobby you learn to fly fish. You know, uh, you have to learn how to fly cast, and most people make a mess of it, you know, the first several hundred times. Uh, they try and do a basic, you know, fly cast with a fly rod, you know, while fishing. So, you know, uh, you're allowed to make those mistakes. It's all part of a hobby, uh, and it's all part of a new skill. So, yeah, if you don't know the cue signal, to say it. Um, you know, they exist for brevity, but, you know, this is also a place to learn. So don't let that stuff worry you. So uh, any other questions, comments? Okay, good. So let's uh, very quickly cover what happens when uh, the net control sends you off frequency. Uh, he might do one of two things, one of which is to tell you to clear the traffic on frequency, or more likely he'll often send you off frequency, but we'll talk briefly about the two. Uh, so for example, uh, if he wants you to clear the traffic on frequency, I believe I've got a slide here for that somewhere. Let's uh, slide this guy over a little bit. I'm trying to keep uh, things a little faster here than the 45 slides we've got. Uh, the What he will use typically is, well, a lot of times he'll use the QN signal QNK. And uh, so if you look at your, your little pink card here, uh, basically QNK means transmit messages for blank to blank, okay? Uh, so uh, he might say to the operator that's holding the message, uh, you know, uh, W8MALQNK, uh, um, you know, WB8SIW, Chicago 1, okay? Or something of that nature. And that basically says, okay, that's right here on net frequency, you know? Uh, uh, W8MAL transmit messages uh, to, for WB8SIW, you know, one, one message for Chicago. Uh, and every net will do it a little bit different, but that's the general idea. So, for example, if you look at uh, the pink card, which you guys really don't have, but uh, QNK means transmit messages for two. So I'm, uh, I'm holding, uh, let's say I'm net control. Uh, and uh, W6RRI is holding one message for Chicago, and I want him to transmit it to uh, W8MAL. It would be like this. I would go ahead and call. Uh, uh, I would go ahead and call both stations, okay? And W6RRI would just tap his key. And then W8MAL, I would just send his suffix. He'd tap his key. Now I know they're both listening. And then I would say, Oh, I'm sorry, it's W A M A L. So, you know, basically. Uh, you know, uh, uh, send the message here on frequency. That's uh, basically what he's saying. You know, uh, W8, uh, W6RRI send, you know, uh, to uh, w, uh, uh, W8MAL uh, Chicago 1, da 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 You know, uh, uh, then they know, okay, uh, it's time to exchange the traffic. And typically, the station receiving the radiogram always calls the station who's sending it, okay? That's kind of a convention in CW nets. The operator who's going to be receiving the radiogram establishes contact. So if W8MAL is receiving the message, he would go,
So there I said, uh, W6RRI, D-E-W-8-M-A-L, you're good readable as QRK5, QRB ready to copy, K for over. And that's that means, okay, I'm ready to copy. Now the signal report's optional. You don't need to use it if, you know, conditions are good. And everybody's you know, pretty good assurance that everybody can hear each other. But that's basically how it would work. Okay, very, very simple and straightforward. Uh, just basically, you know, same way you might in a QSO. Hey, James. Yeah. Sorry, one more question. Um, the use of QNK compared to QSP, because I've seen QSP Chicago one here now, and they've already got both the attention of the sender and the receiver, and then the receiver just does a QRV. Yeah, that, that works too. Yeah, yeah, you'll hear different different procedures on some of the nets. It's the same thing, right? Yeah. QNK yeah. and QSP just saying, go ahead, here now. Yeah, some net controls won't even use the QNK. They'll just say, you know, RRI, you'll hear the DIT, MAL, hear the DIT. And uh, he'll say, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, send Chicago one or TX, you know, yeah. you know, Chicago one or something like that. And they know what to do. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. The only difference between that and sending two people off with frequency is the net control a lot of times will say QNY. D3 or up three or something like that. Uh, but, uh, and sometimes he won't even say QNY, he'll just go something like, and then of course he responds with a DIT, MAL. He responds with a DIT, and that control goes, you know. I'm sorry. You know, CHI or Chicago or whatever. And then uh, both stations just go to let them know, okay, we understood the instruction and they go off frequency and the net just continues along while they move down three kilohertz to exchange the message. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, anybody that doesn't make sense for? Anybody's totally lost? <laughs> Uh, so uh, I, I do I want to say it's not too difficult to figure out that they want you to go down and you transmit the message. It wasn't too easy to figure out what you do when you come back. Mm -hmm. What I saw people do is they wait for sort of dead space and they just give their suffix and that lets net control know that you're back. That's correct. Yeah, that's that's the kind protocol. of the standard procedure. Okay. But you wait yeah. for dead air or you wait for the next Q&I? Yeah, you wait for dead air. Uh, no, it's usually fine. Uh, you know, once you become a little bit experienced, you know, you'll know when uh, when it's a good time to transmit. But yeah, it's usually uh, you know a point where there's some dead air after maybe a couple stations have uh, been excused or they've acknowledged some instructions from NCS, and you know, you just have a blank moment there, and you can just go, and he'll go to acknowledge you. That you're back on the net yeah and uh now the only exception to that of course is let's say that you go down to three kilohertz and you absolutely can't hear the guy you know like uh <laughs> you know i mean his signal was qrk zero you know or qrk one and you just couldn't hear him amidst the, the the static and the noise and the fading and everything else so you might come back and say something like No good, NG, you know, no good. And then uh, net control sometimes will send somebody else to relay or try and set you up. Uh, but uh, that's really all you have to do if for some reason you don't clear the message. And then your best friend is QTA to withdraw the message. So come yeah, back. a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times the guy holding the message will say QTA if it's a routine message, you know, yeah. uh, if it's a welfare message or. A, you know, priority message, you don't have that option. So net control will try and set you up with somebody to relay. Okay. And uh, so that's really all there is to it. Uh, so remember, you know, just the basics here, okay? So, you know, going back, you know, to the fundamentals, uh, basically remember how to check in, okay? Uh, so net control gives the net call. 
and you just send a letter of your choice. Okay, typically most guys do the first letter of their suffix, uh, unless there's a lot of guys that share the same letter maybe. <laughs> and uh, when net control repeats that letter, you just check in and say DE, you know, W-B-8-S-I-W, uh, uh, Q-R-U-K, or you uh, say, you know, W-B-8-S-I-W, Q-T-C, destination and quantity K. That simple. Then net control will simply acknowledge you and typically tell you to stand by until he's ready to move that traffic. So that's checking in, okay? Uh, checking out is the same thing. Net control will send your call sign suffix. You simply acknowledge with a little dit. Uh, he'll say, you know, thank you, uh, Jim73, QNX for excused. And you simply sign out with, uh, you know, uh, uh, 73 or a thank you and, and you get lost. You know, it's... And you're gone. Checking in and out. That's simple. Does that kind of make sense to everybody? Yeah. And uh, then again, uh, you know, uh, just remember, uh, you know, the QNY procedure, uh, you know, down three, up three, and the receiving station always calls the transmitting station. Okay. And so let's last and foremost, I guess, let's, I don't know if the audio passes through on these, but here's a, a radiogram. So uh, uh, this is, um, I don't know if you, if you guys can't hear this, like wave your hands, like stop or something like that. Uh, this is a, a radiogram, probably transmitted about 20 words a minute. It might be a little fast for some of you guys, but let's see if this works here. Real light audio. Okay, let me stop it then. So I'm going to send this radiogram, okay? And I'll do it at a fairly slow speed. So I'm going to send this radiogram so you guys kind of hear the, the format, okay? Okay.
sorry about the little errors there with my uh, funky old straight key here. Uh, but uh, uh, did that make sense to everybody? Not difficult at all, right? You know, pr pretty straightforward stuff. So, so here's another one. Uh, this one's a uh, much more complicated. Uh, uh, this is a uh, looks like it's a net report. Uh, <laughs> so, the uh, yeah, that one that would require a, a little bit uh, a little bit more skill, right? Uh, if you had to send this guy, you know, as a uh, a much uh, uh, much more complicated radiogram, but the process is the same. You know, it's just uh, you have to be a little more careful in sending the text. So this is a region set six net report. So region six session one on April fourteenth, Zulu uh, KI six BHB is net control um, W two. Uh, I don't know what the W2 is. I guess that's a, a call sign. Uh, the net control, I'm sure, uh, net manager will know who that is, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, N6, yeah, AWH, W1, WB6, UZX, uh, NCN, et cetera. It's just basically call signs and uh, traffic quantities and things of that nature. Uh, pretty complicated little radiogram there. Again, a big advantage on CW to send something like that, say, versus voice uh, communications. You know, here's another example. Uh, this is a service, uh, a, a message reporting date and time of delivery. So it's using uh, what's called an ARL or RRI uh, radiogram text. So these message texts here translate. You, what you do is when you go to deliver this, you translate it to a to a message. So if we go here to, nope, that wasn't the one I wanted here. Let's see, uh, where did it go? Those are the training classes. I thought I had that document up. Uh, let's see, I apologize. Let's see, we go over here to publications. Uh, there we go. There we go. So let's go to, uh, let's move this. And let's slide down to 47. This says reference your message number blank to blank delivered on blank at blank UTC. So these are basically pre-formatted message texts. So if you come back here You'll see ARL 47 means your message number 1557 uh, delivered to KO4CZZ April 23rd, 1624 Zulu. Station says thank you very much, 73 uh, break Diane WB4RJW. So I'll try and send it here with a, a little bit faster for this one, okay?
Okay. So I was fast. It's probably about 25, 28 words a minute, somewhere in that range. Uh, so, you know, when you get up to the higher speeds, they, they, they perk along pretty fast. But uh, you guys could follow that along there on, on the letter. So uh, that's uh, the same radio, you know, another radiogram just transmitted at a lot faster speed. So are there any questions at this point? Not a question, but that's pretty good on a straight key for 25 words. Oh, I was using a bug for that one. <laughs> I kind of figured that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, I, you know, I can, I can send pretty fast on a straight key, but not quite that fast, I think. Let's see what I could do right here. I guess, you know, what, maybe about 20, a little over 20, maybe, you know, uh, but you wear out fast using a straight key at those speeds, you know, so uh, probably not the best fist either. But anyway, so uh, any other questions, comments, uh, things of that nature? So do you guys think now that uh, if you guys, and well, some of you are experienced here, I know that, but you guys uh, feel like you'd be comfortable checking into a CW traffic net for the first time? Uh, did I dispel some mysteries? <laughs> okay, <laughs> not getting a lot of feedback there. So uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, found some value in this. And uh, so uh, uh, again, I, I think one of the beauties of CW Nets is the fact that you can, you know, you can go ahead and. Uh, you know, do it with just, it's really a skill-based thing. You don't need a lot of special equipment. You don't need a sound card interface. You don't need a laptop computer. You can clear an awful lot of communications traffic with just your own personal skills. Yeah, thanks very much, James. Uh, this was terrific. And I can just say I've checked into some nets and they're even pushing me to start being a net control just as simple, you know, get started. And everyone's just so patient and really tolerant. I think everyone appreciates that we're all like, this is not easy and they're patient. They'll, you know, you, the best thing you learn is dit, dit, da, da, dit, dit. Right? <laughs> I don't yeah. know what you're saying. So I just dit, dit, da, da, dit, dit. And I keep doing that until they finally spell it out and tell me, and everybody's just having a good time. So it, it's really very forgiving and people are patient. And I thank you uh, for, for your patience tonight. Yeah, we, we, we didn't really dig into how to ask for fills and some of the more nuanced procedures. And, and we do cover these in the RRI training manual. Uh, so you guys are welcome to, to dig into that. But, you know, you may hear, uh, you know, for example, a station say something like, uh, da 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 So that's like... So in other words, I'm asking for a fill. Uh, it's like say again word after john or say again word before you know something of that nature you may encounter that but uh, read through the section on cw net procedures in the rri training manual and that, that'll help you out a lot with those the kind of nuanced procedures and the like but we have uh it's been an hour and a half so i, I got to cut you guys loose just out of cur courtesy <laughs> so but uh, I think you'll find CW operators uh, uh, really, uh, uh, you know, really uh, are a welcoming bunch uh, and we need new blood, you know, to keep it going. Uh, you might note here that Mike W8MAL has a recording on YouTube, uh, search his call sign W8MAL and it's a uh, recording of the Ohio slow speed net. And that may be helpful to you as well. Uh, so, any other uh, questions before we re, uh, adjourn for the night? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here. I genuinely appreciate it. I appreciate your time and your interest. And, and you know, get, get in there, get involved, and drop me an email now and then and, and tell, me, uh, tell me how you're doing. Uh, uh, and uh, let me know that uh, you, you followed through. And if you want a pink card, uh, uh, go ahead and uh, drop me a uh, an email at uh, James Wades, all one word, James Wades 
at gmail.com. Uh, J A M E S W A D E S, Whiskey Alpha Delta Echo Sierra at gmail.com. I will go ahead and send you a pink card uh, in the mail. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Charlie, good to see you. I didn't even know you were here. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, uh, James. Another great course. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great night. 7 3. 73. Great job. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, guys. Sorry, I got in here late, but I had my own net to run tonight. So that's oh, the way it goes. <laughs> that's okay. You, you've got good experience there. So uh, but I do appreciate well, you. I was I was doing our HF digital net that I'm net manager of. And that gets quite interesting at times. But so we've got four four of us that on our seventy five meter voice net, we all check in kind of when they call for the E suffixes. We got a WY zero E A E five E I K zero E O I and W zero E O I. We kind of all just check in. It was <laughs> It just happened that way, and we all started checking in that way. <laughs> so yeah. I could imagine, I could. What would it be like a gentleman's thing to do if we all checked into the digital net? Is W Y zero E checks in with his E I do E I, then one of them does E L, and the other one do E L I or something? Or just, yeah, yeah, that would work. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Since we all have the E right. as the first letter of our Currently, right now, I'm the only one doing that and between the two, uh, the IO net and the region 10 net. Yep. But I could, I could see us all checking in and the E and, <laughs> yeah, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can come up with something a little different. Yeah, well, I mean, if we all did, that would be obviously an easy way to identify. Sure. Yeah, makes perfect <laughs> sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, you have a guys. Good one, James. Yeah, Thanks thank a lot. You. Yep. Sorry you I got guys. in late, but I got in as quick as I could. Hey, no problem at all. I'll see you guys, I think, here in about two weeks. Thanks again, James. See ya. Yes. Thanks, Charlie. See y'all. Have a see ya. And thanks to those who helped, uh, Mike and others who offered input. So you all have a great night.